Kia ora team, Coach Kumi here from the 64 Army, uh, updating you with the upcoming training cycle, the CrossFit semi-final preparation. Uh, it's going to begin on February the 26th and run us right through May 26th. It's a 13 week training cycle. Within this training cycle we will cover basically from start to near finish of what you'd see in the open quarterfinals and semifinals um, brackets. It's generally quite a, uh, a time of year that can be a little bit, I guess, lenient or malleable into terms of how you program and train across that section of time, um, just with all of those competitions in mind, and then obviously your day-to-day -day tasks. Um, so hence why we don't want to do a one little three-week block across the CrossFit Open, and then two weeks off, one week on preparation for quarterfinals. Essentially, this is one big macro view at that whole sequencing from uh, the CrossFit Open right through to the end of the semifinals, but also, this is basically, uh, the training block has been many months before this one leading to this point now so many of what many of the things that we have done in terms of uh the preparations to this point we won't quite see now or we'll see in different formatting different strength structures and just basically have different targets and focuses uh throughout this current training cycle that we're about to um, endeavor on uh firstly there is a uh, note that will be attached to this training block. If you do get a chance to see that, it'll be navigating the CrossFit Open. Um, obviously, uh, the CrossFit Open is different for every single user of a training program. Some people like to go on the day of announcement. Um, for us in Oceania, that is on the Friday. Uh, in America, it could be Thursday, I think Thursday 5 p.m. onwards. Generally, you'd look at doing something on like Friday, Friday night lights. Um, the first attempt in Oceania could be on Saturday. Look, you could be doing it on Sunday for whatever life reasons as well, or you could be looking at repeating Monday, uh, final day, Tuesday morning. So obviously there's a bit of complexity there and a little bit of juggle uh, and wiggle room for each of the individual users. So there's just basically um, a, a map, I would say, of how you should look at using it for yourself. So if you're not someone that's prepared to go in on a Friday, then maybe you switch your training days to a Thursday ref uh, recovery flush se session, um, maybe a bit of a stinger. So let's say it's a 10 round workout, you do 20% of the workout, maybe two rounds, just to get a little feel for it and um, maybe figure out one of the transitions or components that you didn't know were gonna be there before doing it. So then you can have your best crack on Saturday, something like that. Um, however, the, all the information is in this training program to get you through that. Um, weeks one to three will obviously be focused on the CrossFit Open. Weeks one to three will be focused on the CrossFit Open, um, integrating all of that work into there. Uh, a lot of our high intensity work will be designed around the Open as, as that will be the centerpiece of getting that high intensity in on the week. Uh, we can't control what the workouts are. Um, they may or may not be of high intensity, maybe skill factors is a limitation, maybe standing around a lot, it might just be so heavy that the nature of the workout doesn't require high heart rate or something of the sort. Um, however, again, we can't control that. And then probably with that in mind, the training pieces that are suggested to be around it um, are built in to choose from depending on the open workout itself. So what I would say is that from, I would, I would say Thursday right through to probably the following Monday, there is a generalized area of work. There's so many different pathways that you can choose to do. Um, don't be upset if you're only getting 80, 90% of the work in because that's all that's needed to be done um, in order to get your best score in the open as well as continuously train for what's to come. Um, I think I would like to add that you know, I think we're past the point of people not caring so much about the Open and the focus on something else down the line. And I think that is true to, to a sense. Um, but I, I also think that I've not seen somebody who is even a CrossFit Games level athlete not give their best effort in an Open workout. Um, whether that's their best score on that attempt, um, I don't know. But the best effort, I think, is is is, is always something that's given. And I, um, you know, now being in 2024, I think that there's multiple things that suggest this. Uh, probably even more so now is a lot more sponsorships that are there, and the sponsors are looking for their athletes to do really well on the leaderboard. Um, that obviously induces feedback to the product. And, um, and drive sales and revenue that way and that's how the, the athlete can support the brands and products that help them. Um, I think that we're at a point in time in the era of CrossFit where um, 
we care about every stage of the season in terms of where we are on the leaderboard. It kind of impacts us mentally uh, for what type of training and how we're going to train moving forward uh, into the next block um, or quarterfinals, semifinals per se. Um, you know, if, if, if I don't care so much about the Open and I'm a CrossFit Games athlete and I'm outside of the top 200 in the world, uh, in the open, then do I start to doubt that uh, the work that I've done is the right work? Do I start to doubt that I'm actually going to be capable of getting to that next point and level? Um, so I do think, again, that there should be some seriousness taken into these workouts. However, uh, if you're beyond the CrossFit Open, of course you're going to train... Um, you're going to train with priorities out, you know, on the other sides of the CrossFit Open workout itself. But the CrossFit Open workout, I still think, should be um, focused with intent. You know, it's good practice to have a one bullet mentality um, and just trying to get off a shot every single time you attempt that. Um, following that week of the CrossFit Open, when that's completed, you'll have the fourth week, which is a a down week. I would say we call it a. a but a down week, but not so much a deload, so it's not it's not quite regressed that far because of the allowance of training volume and tolerances within the open as well. Um, so we are probably already regressed at this stage, um, which is fine because it's not because you're doing less. You can't be getting more in terms of gains. We've just done the the backs of so much work to this point. Let's allow that stimulus and adaptation to filter and flow through uh, whilst we focus on just getting that one bullet, one shot each week and, and, and putting a lot of emphasis in there. Um, we, the 6-4 Army, have designed a mock quarterfinals. The mock quarterfinals will be the following week from the CrossFit Open. So essentially, you will see the mock quarterfinal week. Um, that week specifically would have been a, there will be no competition on for the CrossFit Open, the following week will also be no competition, and then the following week would be the team quarterfinals. So you'd go two weeks without, uh, you'd go team quarterfinals, one more week without, and then age group slash individual quarterfinals. So you would have one, two, three, four weeks from the Open final workout till the individual slash age group's quarterfinals. So you'll have that four week period where you won't having to be competing at the, at the quarterfinals type bracket uh, until you actually engage again. So the mock quarterfinals for us, we've designed are gonna be performed, the, the workouts will come out on a Friday, the submission time uh, will be the Sunday evening, and all submissions will be there and the scores will go live. Ideally, uh, all of our six four Army users, affiliates alike will get involved in this. You'll have up to five, six perhaps workouts that will be scored. It will be the same design you would typically see as a quarterfinals athlete uh, from what we've seen across the last three seasons of those workouts and it just gives us a chance just to dial in and see what it's like to do uh, five workouts back to back to back over consecutive days that are going to vary in difficulty, um, stress factors and things like that. So hopefully it gives you a better um, a better understanding of just how you're going to navigate the quarterfinals when they do come up for you um, and you, you, you'll know more about information about yourself for in terms of the preparation of how do I sleep, recover, uh, how do I feel my days, uh, how does this impact this and that and the next thing and then who knows perhaps we've done a good enough job that we actually land on concepts and structures and themes that it if not similar to what they produce at the quarterfinals themselves. So that will be quarterfinals for teams, that will be a quarterfinals for individuals slash age groups. Um, they will be on uh, the, the end week, sorry, the week ending March 24th, and that's the following week of the, the week three of the CrossFit Open. Um, week five, taper week for the uh, team quarterfinals athletes and then they'll go into the team quarterfinals in the following week which will be week six of this training program um, deload and then we have a taper to peak adaptation peak uh, block week where we will focus on preparing those guys and girls for the uh, the individual slash age group quarterfinals difference this year six day uh, six day window for the workouts um, in the individual quarterfinals so who knows what we what we're to see this time around um, who knows what the deadline submissions are um, but again, I can't see it being too far away from the realm of CrossFit. We know what that should kind of look like now. Um, this training block again will continue still right through deload week, uh, week nine, ten. You'll work all the way up through semifinals, and the semifinals will be focused on those competing in North America, uh, specifically in and uh, Oceania. Um, 
as a day to day micro view of what you should expect in your in your in your outlook for training on a Monday. Uh, heavily focus on some clean and jerk technical work through primers and such, um, some paused clean and jerks or positional cleans and jerks, deficit pulls, uh, we've been pulling from the floor, we're going to do, um, we're going to add in a four inch riser and essentially make that, um, that spinal work or positional work a little bit stronger as well. We have uh, unilateral lower lower body work, so a lot of lunge work in this one. I think that the lunge is the most underrated development for strength indicators in uh, strength training. And then uh, you'll have a second session. So essentially it's a lifting session, session number two, ring muscle up work, uh, some Metcon work, and then you have recovery and optional either running or, or gymnastics work again. So yes, there can be a lot of work if you're choosing to do all of the optionals, 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 but also it's quality over quantity, especially this time of the year. Um, if you're not going to get the quality out of it, don't do it. If you need, if you think that it's high needs, um, then definitely let's work out a system that can get you to get that piece in um, appropriately. On a Tuesday, we have strict presses, so we're going to be building our strict pressing strength overhead. Uh, power snatch cycling development, this is going to be done in so many different formats. Um, high reps, low volume, middle reps, middle range of volume, high, uh, high loads, small reps, um, four times, M reps, all these different things about developing different stages of the power snatch. Um, a Metcon, which will be, what's the Metcon? Metcon is around 15 minutes to 12, 15 minutes. Uh, that type of bracket, mixed modal, you'll typically see weightlifting, gymnastics, monostructural. Um, and then you'll have a couple of options here. So once you finish the Metcon, you'll, one will have inversion gymnastics development. This will be variations of the handstand push-ups, wall-facing handstand push-ups, handstand walking, obstacles, traverses, uh, kicks to, to L-sits, oh, sorry, L-sits to handstand holds all of these inversion gymnastics uh, skills. Optional work, just flat out rowing intervals or um, a Metcon, a standalone Metcon that will help just increase that gas tank of doing more conditioning uh, mixed motor wise. On a Wednesday, begin with skill augmentation. You'll have different pathways for skills. Specifically, we want to heavily focus on pistols. So single leg squats, um, single crossover skips, some double under crossover skips, uh, wall facing strict handstand push-ups, strict handstand push-ups, um, those types of skills and you'll have the option to do uh, either based on your perceived weaknesses and then from there we'll move into back squats which is just going to be a linear progression for back squats in this training cycle, um, undulating rep schemes, threes, twos and ones, loads going up um, and then probably more so for the the next level competitor, odd object development, some sandbag work, axle bar work, pegboards, uh, just all of those, all of those components that you would typically see in a competition. Um, and it's funny that you, and I would say even in local competitions now, we see a general gym structure class or gym gym class structure uh, focus on barbells, burpees, gymnastics, pull ups, kettlebell swings, sit ups, box jumps, and the likes. You go to compete and you get running, but the running's with the sandbag or a plate or a kettlebell, and then you get um, sandbag cleans or box stepovers with dead balls, and you get all of these awkward things that you aren't quite training in class. So if you can spare the the extra time to get into the object development, I think now not only just at the semifinals level or games, we're seeing that start to filter into your local competitions. So that's going to be a really good developmental piece for you. Um, and then from there you have optional work, whether that's gymnastics or running. So in that optional work, again, if you can if you can spare the time to develop those those specific needs of yours, uh, that's going to pay dividends. Our typical Thursday training sessions uh, for for the competitive athlete is either one rest day. You've done a good job up to this point. You earned it. Uh, it always has a little framework there for a point scored system based on your recovery, whether you're getting enough fuel in, hitting your macro target, your hydration fuels, uh, massages, sauna, cold plunge. Um, there's, there's a bunch of things in there that will basically score you points and you're trying to collect 100 points. So that's an option. A catch-up session is an option. So if you just haven't had the time available to you in the training week, this is a, this is a window where you can put one, of the, one or more of those sessions. Um, an aerobic session or an engine building session, which would typically be longer uh, monostructural, mixed monostructural components. And then finally there you'll also have a swim session option as well. 
basically, on that Thursday, you're just trying to prepare yourself to get back into training for a Friday. Uh, remember that use it or lose it kind of uh, analogy. So movement is health and health is wealth uh, when, when, when looking at preparing yourself for the next day. Friday, from weeks one to three especially, you'll have the option to either one, do the open workout uh, and then choose some of the pieces around that that will help support your open workout based on your needs. And there's a bunch of things there. There's weightlifting, there's uh, anaerobic efforts monostructurally, there's strength, there's gymnastics, there's recovery uh, as a standalone component if you've done enough work in the open workout. So there's all those types of things. And then on the Saturday, that would also have the same type of uh, structure as well. Our training program has a seven-day free trial. If you're interested in using the training program, we highly recommend that you jump into the, uh, the, the trial, have a look at what we're about, and uh, we hope that we can support you through uh, the CrossFit season. Cheers.